Hi everyone! Welcome back to Jackie's Pick. Today, I'm going to show you my favorite bluffing game, which is Brew. This game is in the same category as Sheriffs of Nottingham and Citadel. You know, filler games that are best with five to six players. Witches Brew is designed by Andreas Pelican. When it came out in 2008, it received several nominations and awards. When it was re-implemented by Broom Service in 2015, Witches Brew sort of faded into the background. The objectives of Witches Brew is to make potions using ingredients listed on the cauldron and shelf cards for victory points. Players choose 5 out of 12 roll cards to help them achieve their goals. The green rolls help players gather ingredients. The blue rolls help players brew potions. The yellow rolls deals with exchanging gold for ingredients or potion. The gray and red rolls focus on casting spells and taking stuff from your opponents. Notice that on each of these roll cards, there are two possible actions players can choose from. Let me show you how that works. At the start of each round, the first player chooses a card to play and announce I am the blah blah blah. Then in clockwise order, each player check their hand and either pass if they didn't pick that particular roll or decide if they want to take the primary action or the secondary action. The primary action is always better than the secondary action, but only the last player who claims that action gets to execute the roll at the end of the round. If you think someone going after you might have picked that same card, then you could choose to say, so be it, then take the secondary action immediately. So in a three player game, if the first player begins with Rattles the Snake Hunter card, and the second player also pick Rattles the Snake Hunter this round, the second player can claim that they are Rattles instead. At this point, the first player will get nothing. If the third player has also picked Rattles the Snake Hunter, then the second player will also get nothing in this round. Only the third player will gain three Venom White resources. However, if second player thought that the third player might have also picked Rattles the Snake Hunter this round, they can say, so be it. The second player will gain one Venom White resource immediately. At this point, first player is still Rattles the Snake Hunter if the third player didn't choose that card this round. And if that's the case, first player will get to execute the primary action and gain three Venom White resources. The rules of the game are not complicated, but it can be very difficult to make good decisions in this game. Before each round, you have to think, is it better to choose the roles that nobody thinks you would choose? Or is it better to do a double bluff and go with the obvious? Then when the round begins, you have to think about your position. Do you take the secondary action to be safe or risk it for better rewards? If you did win and become the active player, what role should you pick? Most likely you won't get anything for that round. Or maybe you might choose to deliberately lose to someone just so you can have better position next round. The anticipation, the mind games, and the occasional total surprise moments are the best part of this game. We do have to mention that at this moment, the English version of Witch's Brew is out of print. Good thing that the cards in the base game are well designed and the iconography are easy to understand. My American friends have no problem playing my Chinese version with a little cheat sheet I printed out for them. You might wonder why I prefer Witch's Brew over the readily available Broom Service and Broom Service the card game. Both games are great, but unlike Witch's Brew, the starting player in these two titles no longer has to automatically choose the primary action. This modification alone makes a huge difference in how decisions must be made when choosing roles. Also, I'm not a fan of pickup and delivery, so having to do that in broom service takes the focus away from the core bluffing mechanics that I enjoy. Witch's Brew is all about mind games, and that's it. It's easy to learn, with very little downtime, and lots of player interaction. You're constantly double guessing yourself. But when things work out, it's super satisfying. Even if it doesn't, it's pretty hilarious anyway. So if you ever come across Witch's Brew, you must try it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.